Basketball action, Pulteney in the blue and West Rutland in the yellow and we are at the Hinchy Gymnasium and Sutherland it should be a good game tonight. And Pulteney will have the basketball to start things off and you're watching the JV version. Of course, we're going to have the Bar City game between West Rutland and Pulteney at a later date on Channel 15. And if you can't wait to watch it on television, you can go to the website at pegtv.com and click on Video On Demand and watch it that way. That shot from the outside, no good. And rebound will come down to Hart. She'll be in the corner and she'll turn, come up the middle of the floor and now she'll slow things down. They'll run through the plays. Only six players on the West Rutland squad all year, so they'll take the break if it's there. But other than that, they set up to run through their half-court offense. That's Ponto with the basketball, and she's being pressured by Chambers in the corner, and I'll double-check that. And Yeah, I did have that right. It's going to take me, you know, a good quarter to get used to the Pulteney squad's name. They're playing a 2-3 zone, and Erica Valenti is the head coach over at Pulteney. And of course, Sam Gilmore, the head coach at West Rutland's JV squad. So there, I've got the camera iris adjusted, and we're all set. We're scoreless, a minute into the contest. And 23 with the basketballs. Mason. Mason will have her pass tipped and still get it to her intended target over there, which was number 33, and that's going to be Lewis. Mason will put it up, and no, it looked good when it left her hand, but it just didn't cooperate, didn't go in. And burn with the basketball. She'll turn, bring it up the far side, and she'll work to the arc. Now, she's a very good outside shooter. So they have to watch around the perimeter, and Girardi puts a shot up. No good. Mason with the rebound, and she's going to probably bring the basketball down herself. As Liza Mason, we'll be looking at that West Rutland defense. At the top of it will be Hart, and yeah, it looks like they're going to be playing man to man. Got travel call. Yeah, number 15 decided a little bit late to take off with the basketball, and I don't have a 15 on my JV roster. I'll have to wait till the break between quarters and check my varsity roster. So Girardi will look at that 2-3 zone. He'll give it up and Hart the pile. They want to give it back to Hart. She was covered, and then they'll just be patient, work inside the Lincoln. That was a tough pass. The handle was low and hard, and she was able to recover it. And Burn, no space to get the shot off, and it's going to be out from Lincoln's hands, and be picked up by Mason. So each team a little cold here at the start of the basketball game, kind of get, get into the rhythm and the flow of the basketball game. That's no good. That was a three ball put up, and... The offensive rebound will go, and I'll have Pulteney with the first basket. It'll be Lewis with the bucket off the missed shot by Chambers. So Lewis will put Pulteney up two to nothing. Well, you know, I tell you, sometimes that first one's the hardest basket to get, and there's the outside shot by Hart, and it'll be a three-pointer, and it goes three to two real quick. So maybe we're going to have an offensive explosion here now. Getting Mason. Brings the ball out to Chambers. She looks down inside for somebody to break open. Nobody will be down there, did break open. Turn around jump shot no good. It was in the paint and it was a good shot. Just didn't work out that time. We might go right back to that same play again. Hart all the way up and boy big collision and so 2-3 they're calling that on Mason. Liza Mason called for the foul. Now send Hart to the line for the game's first free throw attempts and they'll come with 5-15 to go in the first quarter of play. So obviously that's Mason's first foul. All right, with two shots coming up, she'll look the first, and no. That will say at three to two. Oh, it's damp and cold outside, and I think some of that has come inside to the gym. they got to warm up at the shooting here, and Hart will miss that. And Lincoln got a finger on it, and I believe it went off from Chambers' leg out of bounds, and it is the call, so it'll stay with West Rollins. They'll miss both free throws, but they get the offensive possession back as the ball went to bounce off from Chamber. Lincoln to Girardi. Oh, and Hart got fouled, and she's going back to the line. I'll tell you what. I think it's going to be three free throws. Two shots. Okay, I didn't know she was beyond the arc. She was on the inside the two-point range, so it would just be two shots. So she was just 0 for 2 for the line. She'll be up and be 0 for 3. Yeah, she's usually a pretty decent free throw shooter. But this is early in the basketball game. And she'll be 0 for 4 from the line. <laughs> and Chambers will not be able to grab it. It'll go out, bounce, and West Rutland will take possession again. They're going to send Byrne along the baseline. Stan Blickhart's is one official, Mike Candy the other. And just one more game left in the West, West, West Rutland JV season. And Hart, I think it went out from Hart. Yeah, went up from Hart out of bounds. So Pulteney will take over. And again, they got the game's first basket, but it seems a long time ago now. It's Mason. Give the ball back to Chambers, and Chambers wants to drive on Ponto, and 
Well, she got great screen, and then we have a foul call. Before the shot on the floor, the possession foul out of bounds. We'll get the call. That'll be Hart picking up the foul. That'll be her first personal foul. And they're going to have a sub coming in for Boltman. It'll be Lindsey Fox. So Fox 34 coming in the basketball game, and she'll replace Lewis. And they're going to run the stack play to bring it in bounds, and referee. Oh, I think the P fell off his whistle. And it'll be hard to blow it. Now he's all set. Well, he can blow it. It just won't make noise. And that will come back. Chambers. Nope, trying to use the window that time. Rebound will come down Girardi. Now she'll get the push. A controlled break. She'll cut inside. Go to the right hand. Miss it. There's Pano on a follow-up. No. Pano has it again. And no. Well, I tell you, between the four missed free throws and those bunnies are not making right there, that could come back to get them by the end of the game. And so Mason... The Fox will bring it back to Mason. She's in three-point land, and no. I'll tell you, it was online. Just came hard off the rim. Goes out of bounds to Pulteney. And Gianna Ricky, number 21 in the game for Girardi for West Rutland. Again, that is their only sub. They have just six players on the roster. And so Pulteney, that toss coming over to Mason was a little tall and out of bounds. They'll turn the basketball over. And we'll have Burns, Heidi Burns, right in front of the scores table. And Burns will bring the ball in. No pressure as Bolton can sign up in that 2 3 zone. Hart, and that should be a blocking foul again as Hart went to drive on the basket. And yeah, now it will be the call. And I'll send Gianna Rookie to the line. And number 10 coming in is Emily Burke for Bolton. And Burke's going to come in and Obviously going to be at the guard position. She takes the top of the zone. Hard open. Hart fires. And Hart, no. A little long and strong. That'll go out of bounds. And it's going to stay with West Rutland. Went off one of the Pulteney players' hands out of bounds. And Heidi Byrne getting a lot of work here early on. And she'll take it out on the baseline. Sam Blickhart. Hands for the basketball. And they looked to Lincoln on the inside. And that just didn't ever materialize. Never to open up for him. And they brought it back to Rick. And again, there's no shot clock to worry about. They can... Take their time, be patient on the outside, and that's going to be burn up, and no, we'll roll off the rim and not drop in, and Chambers will be tied up by Hart, who lands on the deck here, and she'll get up, and it'll be Pulteney basketball. Well, I'll tell you, there's been a lot of scoring, but been a lot of action, so. And Mason will continue to run the point for the Blue Devils as they come up the floor, and obviously they're in the blue uniforms, and West Rutland in the gold, and Pano kind of got the steal, and she'll go all the way to the backcourt. Almost has. She just couldn't pick it up off the floor. It was a hot potato. Mason gets it off the chambers, and she'll try it. That's way outside, and oh, she got it. Oh, they, they, they got two, two three-pointers in the game, one by West Rutland and one by Boltney. That one was way outside, and she got it. Because of the 5-3 lead to Boltney. Ricky looking, dancing, and then finding Byrne. Burring carried the basketball. Yeah, she took a sharp corner and got called for the carry. Now we side out as Ginger Vaughn, number 35 in the ball game for the Blue Devils, along with number 33, Michaela Lewis. So Pulteney with three minutes to go in the first quarter, have that 5-3 lead, and they have the basketball. That was a hard pass, and it will get back into Mason's hands. And she'll go back to Lewis now. Now work the perimeter. And West Rollins starting to try to talk on defense, communicate, and Hart going to be called for the foul. Yeah, got a little over aggressive there and came around and got the hug call. And the hold, okay, that is what he called it. And Girardi will come back in the ballgame for Hart, who's picked up two fouls here in the first quarter. And Hart will come and sit down probably for the rest of this first quarter. The catch, the shot, and oh, just off the mark by a little bit. Chased down by Girardi, trying to bring the ball forward. She'll pick it up, and now the defense has gotten back by that point, so she'll smartly, good decision, just pull it back out. And boy, Burns good from out there, but she didn't pull the trigger that time. She will this time. That shot will be up, and it'll rim out on her, and you can see the rebound come down to Ginger Vaughn and Vaughn, to Mason, to Lewis. That ball took a long route, but it got in the front court. Did a lot of left to right before it went up and down the floor. Vaughn with the basketball. And 
We're going to go down inside. Oh, nice look inside to Mason. And what a shot by Mason. Oh, that was pretty down inside. 7-3 to three Pultley on that bucket by Mason. She shot against her body going away. Ricky was a good shooter. Passed up the shot this time. We'll come back to Burn and they'll go to Pano. Baseline up and get... Oh, it didn't happen. She got back and got fouled. Boy, I tell you, Pano slid along that baseline nicely. And two shots coming up for Tiffany Ponto. So she'll step to the line with just 142 left in this first quarter play. And the offense is starting to click along now. And then, uh, nope, I thought I might get that second bounce and fall in there, but it'll pop out and we'll stay at seven to three. Hart made the only basket for West Rutland. That was a three pointer. Way back there, 0 for 6 from the free throw line, and Ponto up, got fouled. I think she's going back to the line again. That's Vaughn that ca got called for the foul. And it was Ponto who got the rebound, put the shot right back up, and got fouled. There's the first free throw. And the first points in a long time for West Rutland, down by 3 at 7 to 4. Got them both this time, so she fine-tuned it on the second attempt and got both shots to drop and makes it a bucket ball game at 7-5. to five. Just one basket separating the two schools. Well, again, nice screen setup. There's a running one-hander, and it's a little bit strong. We'll have a push from behind called, and that will be a non-shooting foul, obviously, but I think it's going to be on number 15. Well, I don't have a number for it, but I'm going to work on that in a little while. Got the closet youth basketball tournament coming up very shortly and can catch it in person and always can watch it on channel 15 a tremendous tournament great action fifth and sixth grade boys basketball Vaughn went out from Vaughn last before Byrne touched it so it become gold basketball West Rutland basketball and so Girardi and company Got to kind of get their energy level up, too. They're Girardi open and ties the ball game up. Nice job of finding an open spot on the floor. She's below the free throw line and then banked it off the glass and in. And that happened with just a minute to go, and we're tied at 7-all. They want to go down inside, and Lewis got fouled. Yeah, she caught the ball, and just everybody in gold jersey <laughs> collapsed around her. And that's going to be on Girardi, the foul will be. It's a non-shooting foul. They'll take it out of bounds, as that's the third team foul on West Rutland. And they'll lob it in, and Mason with the catch into Fox, and that was partially blocking right down to Lewis, and she muscled it up. No good rebound will come down to Lincoln, and her pass almost stolen, but Girardi with those good hands will make the grab. Now Girardi in the front court works a little weave with Ricky, and then gives it off to Burn. She'll make the grab in shot and stride, no good, and Pano with a ton of rebounds. That time that shot put back was partially blocked, and it's going to stay with West Rutland with 33.7 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. And Ponto open and see if they take it down for the final shot. Nope, they want Byrne to take the shot and she will rim it out there and that's going to be on the floor and they'll retrieve the ball with 22 seconds to go. Burn up again and that's going to come way outside and be picked up by Pulling. they got plenty of time, 13 seconds and a foul by Byrne in the backcourt and Pulling will take it, they'll take it side out with 12.6 seconds to go. And Mason looks at the clock, very aware of the situation here, and she will look to take a defender on one-on-one, -on -one, puts the shot up for the lead on the rim. No good. It'll come down. Lincoln with it, and got travel called. And the significance of that is there's 2.9 seconds to go, and Pulteney's already in their offensive end, so that's 2.9 seconds is like a ton of time to get a shot off. And stays with Pulteney, 2.3 seconds now, so six-tenths of a second. Quick finger down there. That'll count, and nope. So we're going to end up with a 7-7 score at the end of the first quarter of play in the JV game between Pultney and West Rutland on Peg TV. Well, to be honest with you, that first quarter, they both teams kind of lacked a lot of spark and emotion, and their shooting was lethargic. They got to kind of pick it up mentally here in this second quarter of play. 
That will be a jump ball, and the ball will become Pulteney basketball, and they're going to have Lewis. Michaela Lewis, number 33, with the basketball. But of the seven points, though, it was spread out offensively. Mason wanted to penetrate, and this is going to be three ball. No, that's a little bit too close for her. She hit from before, and boys, Lincoln all covered up and got a foul called against Pulteney. It's a hold, and it should be the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, they're already at the bonus with 7.32 to go in this first half of play. So West Rutland going to get the benefit of being at the free-throw line for every foul now. Other than, you know, the obvious player control foul and stuff, so. Now Chambers took that outside shot, and she's already made one of those. Lincoln will bounce that in there for her first points of the night, and will break the tie, make it 8-7 to seven West Rutland. And nope, she can't get the second one. Alpano again with the offensive rebound and overshot the bucket. Ricky came in on the weak side. Now they'll go to the floor and we'll have a jump ball and it's going to stay with West Rutland. So they're starting to pick up a little bit, both teams are. I think starting off in his own defense, whether you're any school, that's not an active zone on the top with the guards, kind of puts you into lull mold. You know, like a sleep mode already, hibernation mode. Burn will get it. She found her range from the outside, and that'll make it 10-7, West Rutland. I'll tell you, she is a shooter. When she finds her spot, she can drain them from there for quite a while. That's a three ball by Mason off the outside of the rim. It comes down to Burn. She'll circle to the outside, and she's coming down the floor. And now she'll pull up now and hit the trailer on the play. Which was actually, she's looking for Lincoln, came back to Girard, who made the save on the basketball. That's Ricky, no. And the rebound will come down to Chambers, and she did a good job that time of holding on to the basketball and gave it to Mason. Again, no pressure in the back court. There hasn't been yet to this point, with 6.35 to go in the second quarter. Chambers, wanting to take it to the hole, will reach back and get the basketball. Mason, we well, see that good footwork defensively by Ponto, and she's played an excellent. First half of basketball, Pontoise. Got an offensive foul. I think she out, she extended the arm. And so, West Rutland, uh, that's what we're talking about, player control foul. They won't shoot on that. It was the team's eighth foul. Pano to Ricky to the basket, and no. Long rebound on the run. Pulling will have the basketball. Number 10 came up with it. Burke. Burke will come back now to her teammate, number 33, Lewis. Lewis across the timeline, comes to the top of the arc. Ricky's going to pick her up defensively. Looks like man to man for West Rutland. Yes, it is. Mason with the spot. The up underneath the hook shot. It almost went. That was creativity. And up ahead, and Burn will chase down the long pass. And nope. She heard those footsteps. Burke with the basketball and switched the ball at this side to Mason. I think Mason's played every minute of this first half. And I mean, I can see why she runs the whole show out there offensively. There's a two point shot. 10 to nine on that basket. Pulteney down by just one now. <laughs> and Burn left open. No, oh, I thought she might get the second ball. Oh, big block. And a put back by Ponto, no good. And it's gonna go from Ponto on the bounce of block was Lewis, Michaela Lewis blocked the shot. And it's Michaela Lewis coming out now to take a breather. Well, I've talked to players before and they, most of the players say they'd rather block a shot like that, hammer it, to make a basket. Girardi gambled, didn't get it, Burke open, and then, boy, Girardi recovered nicely. I'll go out from Ponto's hands back to Burke, and she wants to dump it down inside. The Chambers, up, no good, and rebound will be all Ricky if she boxed out nicely on that side. Up ahead of Girardi, numbers aren't there, see if she pushes it. Yeah, she's going to give it up, and yeah, you can see the defense is back in good position. Great idea to get the, you know, if he was open to make the pass, but nice defensive play by Pulteney. 10 to 9 west side of the lead, and Pulteney trying to regain the lead, and they traveled, yeah. Mason just twitched that back foot, and it'll be a travel call. And Byrne has been doing the duty of bringing the ball into play, and Girardi, just her mouth guard, and all set now. Go to Pano, and she, in that paint, she wants to get out. Nope. Yeah, and she didn't. 
Now I knew she was in there quite a while and she can she kicked it out, but then she kinda hung out in there for that little second too long. 425 to go now in the second quarter, and it's 10 to 9, West Trotland. Mason lined up with Pano. Pano, very good defender. Gonna throw it down inside and Chambers fades, fires, a little flat on the shot, and comes off the rim to Ricky, and Ricky will dribble out of the traffic. Ricky's got the numbers now. She tries to get the pass up ahead to Girardi. She'll shoot and no. Uh, there's Pano up and fouled going to the line. Daya Pano's got to be close to seven or eight rebounds already in the basketball game. And I bet four of them are offensive rebounds. And so Tiffany Pato will be up and a little short with that one. Yeah, it's pulling will bring back in. Michaela Lewis into the ballgame number 33. She got a little breather and coming back in. So Ponto got the second one. Makes it a two-point lead at 11 to 9 now. And Lewis to Fox to Mason. She'll dump it down inside Chambers. Got it. Tie ball game at 11. Nice job that time. They worked the passing angle. Got the ball in low, and Chambers will tie it up. Pass tip, still gets to Lincoln. Now she wants to kick it back outside, and there's a little ball reversal there by Wes Rutland. Pano stepped inside the defender, didn't pull the trigger on the shot, gets it outside to Burns. She'll miss it. Ball tip. Chambers will chase it down, and she'll pick it up on the baseline. Mason, one last thing to say to Chambers before she brings the ball up and sets the play up. We're tied at 11 with three minutes, five seconds to go here in this second quarter play. Mason had the ball stripped, but she's still able to push the pass out to Chambers. You gotta watch Chambers on the outside. She's shown the, that she likes to take that three-point shot. Got a double dribble called on Mason, and she knew it. She knew it. And Girardi takes a look around, and nothing but open court in front of her. That 2-3 zone, they've been in it the whole ball game, and Almost came a steal. It is a steal. Pulteney will come up top and make the steal at the top of that zone. So they're looking for the lead now. It had the lead for a while. It's gone back and forth. And there's the grab, the drive, and grab a foul. Yeah. And that will be the sixth foul. That will be the last time West Rutland can foul without sending Pulteney to the line. So that's, of course, the obvious. Vaughn coming back in, Ginger Vaughn, 35 in for Pulteney, and she'll replace Chambers. They'll come way up top, and that's going to be Mason with the grab to Vaughn. She'll ball fake, and almost a steal. Now, I'm not sure what that was, a pass or a shot, but it's going to be a jump ball now. And Pulteney will have the basketball. So that tie up right there, the arrow favoring the Blue Devils. Then they come inside to Fox. Fox put it on the floor and oh, jump ball as both players will get up and be okay. That was Lincoln that tied up the basketball. So Girardi and company, they look for the lead now with 2.23 to go in the second quarter. Byrne quickly got the ball down to Lincoln and nope, she's going to get her own rebound and ball on the floor picked up by Mason. So Pulteney able to weather that. A couple tries from in close, and Lewis goes to the free throw line to Fox, and Girardi slapped it out of her hands, and taken back by Vaughn. Inside, no, a little hard off the glass. And they'll hustle to the sideline, and it'll be West Rutland basketball. Okay, so Girardi will bring it up. Again, it hasn't been a ton of scoring she travels yet. I mean, it hasn't really been sloppy play either. It's been a lot of cold shooting, but nobody really stepping up on either side to say, okay, I'm going to, I feel it, and I'm going to take the shots here. Mason. Wanted to drive, and was struggling in that man-to-man -man defense, and that's going to be Burring with the steal. It came in the pass, a little bit hard for Lewis to handle. Byrne pulls up, lets it fly, and nope. 
came right out the front of the rim straight down and Mason will have it with a minute 20 to go and yeah, I was about to say she had her dribble still and that's what she's going to do and she'll bring it down and she'll slow down at the free throw line where Ponto picked her up that ball goes inside off the glass and in oh nice job getting the ball in down low like that and being able to play the back to the basket 13-11 Fulton Shavey squad with the lead Ponto I'll give it off to Burn. No. See that thing go down and out? Ponto got it. No. One more time. Ponto with a couple offensive rebounds. She's got to be double digits now in rebounds. We're tied at 13. Just 40 seconds remain in the opening half of play. Vaughn to Girardi. She stepped out. Yeah, you saw it. Good job, but she stepped out of bounds. And it was close, but it was a good call. And we'll have Lewis looking. Does one get the five count? That should just bring it back. Fox will go down in the corner. And there's the baseline, and there's the foul. Yep, boy, I want you to surrender to that baseline. You're usually in a whole lot of trouble. And two shots now coming up for Pulteney. Like I said, I don't have number 15 on my JV roster. And I don't have a 15 on my varsity roster, so I don't know who she is. She got the basket, though, I'll tell you that. She'll break the tie, and they're going to bring Chambers back in for Lewis for Pulteney. Pulteney in the blue uniforms on the road at West Rutland. And so for a two-point lead, she'll have them. Both. So 15-13, 26 seconds left in, in Girardi. Has the pass tipped by Fox, and they'll go to the floor and spun around and jump ball. It's going to be signed out, I believe, for Stan wants it. And it's going to say West Rutland ball. That's what I was waiting to see. Yeah, it's going to be West Rutland's burn taking the ball out of bounds. They find Lincoln. Yeah, she came all the way back up top and lost her balance, and the ball will go out of bounds, and it should be blue basketball. And it is. It's going to be Pulteney now with 15 seconds to go. See if they can get the last shot of the quarter off. Mason. Oh, and boy, I tell you, this last 20 seconds has gone back and forth with possessions here as each team does want to hold on to the basketball. And so West Rotland with 12 seconds to work with. Burn quickly into the front court to Ricky. Puts it up and got it. Ricky will tie it with just four seconds, three seconds. Two seconds, and that's the buzzer. And a pretty fitting halftime score. It's 15 all in the JV game between Pulteney and West Rutland. Ball in play to get this third quarter underway. We're tied at 15. A little blocking foul on Girardi. Nice. Get away for the board. I think she's getting near three falls here. Not only two, so she's still all right. And Hart in the ball game for West Rutland. Remember, she got in foul trouble with two fouls in that first half and saw it for a good majority of the first half. She's back in here now. Lewis on the wheel, gets a shot up and danced on the rim, wouldn't drop. Hart will get the rebound, and Hart is going to go right into the front court on the dribble. Now she'll pull it back between the circles now. Again, Pulteney coming out in that 2 3 zone. There's the read to steal. Pulteney on the attack will dribble to the inside, and she might have carried the basketball, and she did. Tell you what, though, she's made a couple steals on the top of that zone defense. Here's Girardi, taking her time, waiting for the defender. Lewis came out to her, gave it off to Byrne. Ponto, tell you, Ponto can heat up. She's had a lot of good looks at the basket. That becomes a pass, up, oh, no good. And Lincoln, one more time, maybe. It's a tough shot, that's why she held up. She was on a funny angle. That's a better angle. No, she rushed it. So she had a couple of chances and couldn't get the shots to drop. And so we will stay tied at 15. One minute gone yeah, in the third quarter play. See Lewis looking. They want to go down inside. And that pass tip comes to Hart. They're looking to go down inside the chambers. Hart in transition. And they'll give it back to Burn. Three ball for Burn. Nope. And she's still looking, and Girardi with a good effort, but it'll go out of bounds. Yeah, so that cold shooting carries over here from the first half into the third quarter. And Mason 
We'll get the basketball back and Mason, I think she went the whole distance in that first half. Off the glass, no good. Lincoln had it, tipped it, comes to Hart. Numbers are there, she's got a two on one and she's gonna take it all the way up herself, block and Mason, I believe, will pick up her second foul. Two, three is Mason, and I believe that's number two on her. It is, so just two fouls on Mason, and that'd be a tremendous loss for Fulton to get her in foul trouble. Like I said, she's played, I think, the whole game, and she runs the offense and coordinates the defense, and that cold free throw shooting continues for West Rutland. And she'll get one and two this time, so. That'll make it a 16-15 West Side lead. You're watching the JV basketball action. The varsity game will precede this. And if you need to see it sooner, you can go to the website, pegtv.com, click on video on demand, and pick out the game you want. Well, I tell you what, that's a great shot. That's making space on there. Burn got bumped out of the way by Lewis, and Lewis makes the little basket, little bunny shot on the basket, makes it 17-16 Pulteney. Ricky at the score table getting set to check in for West Rutland. Ponto went and got the pass. Nice job by Ponto doing that. Hart thought better about it on a drive, and then she'll get the ball down inside to Lincoln, and I think Lincoln still got it. No, she lost the handle on it. will come back, and Mason ends up with the basketball after all that. Just the first you want to have it if you're Pulteney. There's the ball down inside. Again, below the free throw line and on the floor. Jump ball. Yep. And it'll be coming down, so it'll be a strutting possession. And now Ricky coming in for Burn. So Gianna Ricky, number 21, now in the contest in the backcourt with Tony Girardi, who's got the basketball. There's that little baseline play, and boy, they're missing some. Funny shots tonight, and there's a foul. As Lincoln got slapped by everybody on the Pulteney squad, and she'll go to the line and shoot two. Again, so it's Ricky, Girardi, Lincoln, Ponto, and Hart on the floor for West Rutland. And she'll get that first one. Pies the game at 17 all. It's been tight like this the whole ball game. And she'll miss the second shot. Pono crashed the boards, tipped the ball to Hart. Girardi open, got it. Two pointer for Girardi. Well, they left her open and she drained it. 1970 now, West Rutland will reassume the lead. No, no, this has got the making of one of those wild last three minutes of the fourth quarter games. That goes down inside, Chambers fires, no. Rebound, Pulteney foul. And I think Girardi might just pick it up foul number three. Fifteen is Girardi. And it is her third, so she becomes, to my knowledge, the first person for West Rutland to pick up three fouls. And I'll bring Byrne off the bench, and she should come in now. Or she's coming in, yeah. She will come in for Girardi. So Girardi with the three fouls will sit down. So in a 1918 game, Pulteney looking to tie it, but will not. Got one and two, and Ponto will get another rebound and put the ball on the four for one dribble and come off to Ricky. Ricky will go to the point, it looks like, on his trip down the floor and give it to Byrne. That's going to be up and good. Byrne will get it. Two point shot for Byrne. She's starting to find it now. She's starting to connect on those shots now that weren't falling for her in the first half, and all she did was just keep on shooting. Don't get discouraged if you miss, she just keep on shooting. Chambers might have traveled. Yes, she did. That she wanted to pull up and kick the ball back outside and just did drag that back foot and that will cost her possession. So Ricky with a long pass received almost near mid court. And that's going to be a, that's going to be a turnover as Ricky wanted to kick the ball to Hart and the pass was just out of her reach. And Pulteney now will take it over in the 21-18 game. West Rutland's leads at three points. Mason trying to tie it. No. 
And then ball on the floor, tipped around, still on the floor. Hart got a hand on it. Oh, they're going every, look at the effort for this basketball. Byrne will step over the bodies on the floor, pick it up. Lincoln will get up now. Ricky will pick up the basketball. Great sequence of action right there. You talk about effort. Byrne pivots, gives it to Ricky, and get a fall. Yeah. That was Lewis who came out, got a little bit too aggressive, and that'll be the foul. And we have a 30-second West Shelton timeout. They lead 21-18 over Pulteney in JV basketball. And you can see Ponto with the grab, want to go right back down to Hart, and a lot of people there in blue jerseys didn't want that to happen. Fox came up with the basketball, now she'll spin around and get the pass off to Mason. That's Chambers. She, they got Lincoln out on her, and Chambers came all the way inside, and yeah, Hart just picked up foul number three. Well, I believe it's Hart. Oh, they're going to give it to Lincoln, so I apologize to Hart. Burke had her dribble, didn't take it. And go to Mason. Look how quick she is off the dribble. Found an open space, and no. Good looking shot, too. Ricky, 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 got it, lost it, Burke has it. And everybody kind of starting to pick up now. You've seen the third, second half of play, the third quarter of that. With 3.08 to go, a 21-18 game, West Front with the lead, that teams are starting to wake up now. Mason, Ponto back on her. That's been the matchup for most of the night. I mean, I'll have to switch off, but yeah, Chambers reached out and uh, Got a moving pick. I don't know what Stan's going to call it. Illegal pick. Oh, I got it right. That's what he called. And now Pulteney with a different look with the press. I like that. Oh, and Hart got away with some steps there. That's home cooking. And Hart puts the shot up and no. Rebound down to Burke. So I like what Pulteney did. They went to a press. Hope to see more of that. They'll just pick up the... the pace of the game. That's going to be short and Hart had it lost it. Fox will pick up the loose ball and go back to Mason. It's been a while since Pulteney's put some points on the board. And that's going to be the third ball on Hart. And Hart will pick up her third ball. So Girardi and Hart for West Rutland both with three fouls. Each team with 14 fouls apiece. And that's going to be short again, and it'll go out of bounds off from I believe Lincoln's hands out of bounds. Pulteney's going to retain possession. And they're going to go, that's that's not a backcourt. Mason's okay to pick that up. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's in the backcourt, but it's not backcourt violation. Oh, that's a hard pass. It was low and went out from Fox and a foul on Mason. I think Mason might have just picked up number three. Now she's going to be Lewis coming in. I don't know if she, yeah, she will take Mason all the game. Oh, that's four on Mason. Wow. Oh, that's huge for Bolney. Four falls on Mason. Now, somewhere I lost track of one. Hart lost it. Burke has it. And Burke will get the pass off to Fox. So another good defensive play by Bolney. They got it underneath the basket, but they really were on no angle there to take the shot. That's Chambers that brought the ball down. And that's going to be on the open court on the weak side and picked up by Pony, so they'll get another possession here. And Fox, as they try to make the most of this, are down by three, 2018 with 21 to 18 with a minute 48 to go. Yeah, and Chambers. Do I see how much they missed Mason out there setting up the offense? Fox with the basketball. Her pass grabbed. They go down inside the paint, and that's going to be blocked by Ponto as she got the block and then Ricky lost the basketball momentarily and it'll be a jump ball, it'll be Pulteney basketball. I believe that you'll see Mason sit for the less of this third quarter. But I can't believe them she wouldn't be back in there and start of the fourth. But the whole offense takes a different look when Mason's not in there. Boy, nice catch and then a foul on Byrne. It'll be a blocking foul on Byrne and 
Yeah, and I'm waiting next. So she now has three fouls also. Bond, number 35 in the ballgame for Pulteney. She's going to replace Burt. No, she's going to replace Fox. And Girardi coming in for Byrne. So the foul trouble is starting to get a little deep now for West Rutland. Oh, look at Hart make the steal. She played off the pass and read the pay up, play all the way. Hart up and count it. Hart will get the basket and a chance for the three-point play from the free throw line. And Burke picked up the foul. Yeah, it was Burke. And so that pushes Lee down to 23-18, 24-18. And they wanted Burke long. Burke did the right thing. She came up to meet the ball. Put the brakes on, hit it on the trailer. Chambers, 54 seconds to go in the third quarter. Pulteney needing the basket. It's been a while, lead's gone to six. And Ricky dribbled the ball out of bounds. Gonna stay with the Blue Devils. There's a the catch by Vaughn, up and no. It was a good inbounds play. She was open. Girardi didn't want to Miss the layup. She curled back and she wants her teammates to get set and get some numbers here. And boy, Ricky, that was quite a play. And Ricky will pick up the foul, and that was quite an effort right there by Boltney. I don't have that young lady's name and number, so I don't know who it was. Just a tremendous play, though. And Vaughn had it knocked away by Girardi, and she's going to give it to the trailer. Ponto, short. Tipped, and I believe Ponto touched it last. Now it's going to stay with West Rutland with 27 seconds to go in this third quarter. I'm sorry, it was Pulteney. I thought it was. Okay, Pulteney will get the basketball back. They've got 27 seconds going. You can see Lewis find Vaughn. 17 seconds on the clock and counting. Shot will go up and just nick the rim. It becomes a Pulteney possession. They'll pick it up. That's going to be outside and a little bit off the mark. Long rebound. Girardi will take it on the fly. Five seconds, four seconds. And oh, she was thinking about her steps. And that's going to be the quarter. There's a better quarter offensively as West Rutland has a six point lead going into the fourth quarter of play. Final eight minutes of the contest. And that's a good play as again steals tonight to hurt West Rutland, especially against that 2 3 zone. The shot will be missed. Mason is back in the ball game. See, you have to pull out there, and Girardi will lose the ball out of bounds. Mason playing with four fouls. That's talking about. I'm talking about number 23 for Boltney out there. And you can see how much your offense changed when Mason wasn't in there to set the table offensively. Well, Brown up, no good. Rebound tipped, and Girardi had it, and Girardi still has it. She'll pick it up, and I think well, I'm going to see. I think it went off for Girardi out of bounds. She'll crash into the wall and be good. Okay. And it will be off from Girardi, last touch by Tony, and you can see Pulteney set the play up, and they break. Fox was open and pass it right to Ricky. Tell you, it's hard to not see those bright yellow uniforms. Oh, another missed layup. And no, not Ricky picked it up. And that will be shots now at the other end of the floor. Yeah, that is seven fouls now on West Rutland. Pulteney has 16 fouls, and basically, next foul that Pulteney commits, everybody's going to be shooting in this fourth quarter. It's Dakota Chambers at the line. She will get it, and that had been a long time between points. Chambers looks, fires, and can't get the bounce go her way. It's going to be off from Pulteney and West Rutland by 5, 24-19. And Pulteney going to go to the press. I like that. Now they got to pick up the intensity, and they got to... West Rutland's had a lot of trouble against the top of the 2-3 zone. What are they going to do against the press? That's just a great job of staying with it defensively yeah, and jump ball. That was just swarming defense right there. Yeah, and so Pulteney 
chance to keep cutting into that lead, cutting into that lead now. As we play just one minute of the fourth quarter, Mason matched up against Ponto, and Ponto's done a good job limiting her points tonight. And she's got the foul there, yeah. And that will send, that's two shots coming up for Mason. I like the way that she attacked the basket. Yeah, so Mason will step to the line, and like I said, she was going to get two shots, and that was, uh, that's the first foul on Ponto. Mason swishes it, and all of a sudden, lead down to four, and Burns going to come in for Girardi for West Rutland. And she'll get them both. Good looking free throws. Three point ball game. And see if the press can take an effect here. Ricky came back and got the pass up ahead to Byrne and collision and a foul. Yeah, and now Byrne's going to go to the free throw line. He's got to make the shots. That's the big thing. If you get sent to the line, you got to make them. So Heidi Byrne will step up there. And like I said, both teams are over the limit in team fouls. Twenty-five, twenty-one, and burn. Got them both. West Charlton stunning the defense a little bit. You see Ponto in the back court with soft pressure on Mason. And that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it went off from the foot. A Chambers out of bounds. So. Turnover there, and West Rutland will take over the basketball. They're up by five, and Bryn with the quick return pass gets it up ahead to Pano. Good hands to make the grab, and she'll grab it away before it can be stolen by Fox. Burn with Brown on her, nothing back. Hart, yeah, great ball fake. Yeah, she sold it, and she bought it. She over pursued the ball, came at her too hard, and Hart put it on the floor, went by her. Now Hart, Amanda Hart will go to the line. As Lewis will come back in the contest, Michaela Lewis, number 33 for Pulteney. And they'll miss that, it's only a one and one. So Lewis will chase down a loose ball along the baseline and she's trying to beat Hart down the floor to the spot. And Lewis will kick it back. There's Mason, got a three ball for Mason. Cuts the lead to two at 26-24. Why don't you travel? And that press created that problem, and that'll be a turnover, and Pulteney with a chance to take the lead. So we're going to have a full timeout taken by the Blue Devils as momentum has shifted to Pulteney's side here. And Pulteney, they said they've got the momentum going now, and Fox... We'll go down inside. That's up for the tie game. They've tied the ball game up at 26 all with 5.50 to go. And Byrne able to get the ball. It's tipped away from him. It goes out of bounds. And I think they said it's going to stay with West Rutland. Yes, it will stay with West Rutland. They just had to retrieve the ball. Went all the way across the court. So things got tight. Like I told you, it's going to be a wild last 546 of the basketball game. Ricky with the catch, and no. It's a one and done as they'll throw over the top to Mason. That was Chambers. They got the rebound. Mason really asserting herself. Gets the rebound. Oh, what, what a great job of following up her own shot. And then a jump ball, and it'll be West Rutland basketball. Mason took the shot, followed up, got her own rebound, and then went to the floor to tie the basketball up. That and Pulteney going to stay in press mode. I think that's a great choice. And it's caused trouble. Yeah, you can see it caused a turnover. Chambers to Fox. She'll make the grab. I think it was intended for Lewis. Fox split the defense and... Where's the ball? There it is. Going to call it jump ball. Going to be Pulteney basketball. Yeah, so Pulteney, I believe that's Brown, number 13. Mason feeling it. No. Boy, it looked good when it left her hand, but it stays tight at 26. 
Hart all the way. Hart got the finish. Hart showing you some speed. She's sitting out that second quarter in foul trouble. She should have a lot of fuel left in her tank right now. It's Lewis. Hart's going to pick her apart playing with those three fouls. Got picked out. Oh, they're going to call a foul. I believe on Chambers. It looked like a good screen. Maybe she moved a little bit. Yes, and there's no shots coming up. That's a player control foul, offensive foul. Oh, no, Stan's, Stan's got it right. He Stan says it is a one-on-one. -on -one. So West Rutland will come down with a chance to extend that two-point lead. Well, yeah, I was following the play, and I was following Hart, and all of a sudden she disappeared, and it looked like she was sitting on the floor. That was quite a pick they'd set. And Hart got it. Nice, she missed her first four free throws to start the game off, but when she needs them here at the end, she's starting to find it. And oh, that one didn't go. I can't believe it. Three point ball game leads it a one possession game 29 26, 445 on the clock. Brown, long three, and oh, the thing rattled around Ricky and amongst a couple blue jerseys, and then she got fouled. And I think it's going to be Fox, yeah. Fox gets up, says she's okay. Blocking foul. Oh, they've got blood on the court, so they're going to have to clean that up. So we'll have a break in the action. 29-26, West Rutland. So they got the floor cleaned up. There's some spots of blood on the floor. And And that kind of worked out for West Rutland because, like I said, they only have six players, and that gave them an extra timeout, an extra break to catch their breath and kind of re-energize their battery. And Ricky will put up her first shot and swish it. But well, close to a swish. As the lead goes back to four. 31-26. Working off the screen set by Brown in the front court. Hart, gotta move those feet because she's got four fouls. And it's gonna be blocked from behind by Ricky and then a foul on Ricky. And going to the line will be Lewis. And it's been a choppy fourth quarter. Four fouls on Ricky. And that will bring Girardi back into the basketball game. And this was the ninth team foul on West Rutland, so, and Fulton already at 10 team fouls, so the next foul committed. Everybody's shooting a double bonus. Burn, no. Rebound will come down to Hart, and with 4.13 to go, she'll pull it back out between the circles and let him set up the play now. Hart waiting for the defender to come out and play her, and then Hart to Burn, she's gonna shoot again, and no. That's going to be slapped out of bounds. Should say West Rutland basketball. I believe it was Chambers. It's Burke, number 10, coming in the basketball game for Fox. For Bolton. And now Girardi allowed to come in the game for West Rutland, replacing Ricky. Hanna with the grab, and Hart. That one dribble, and she's got to get rid of the basketball, and she'll give it out to Pano. See, Pano came back and made herself available for the pass, and Hart got fouled by, oh, if that's Mason, she just fouled out. Oh, that's huge. Oh, and it is. That's five fouls on Mason. What a good game she played. What a good game she played. Well, that's going to really affect Fulton on the offensive end. And Hart, nope. Kind of line drived it. Got the second one. Puts lead at six, and now West Rutland going into a little press. Soft look right here. Makes Chambers work the ball up the floor. Chambers with Lincoln on her. Lincoln almost tie her up, and they'll get the ball back to Lewis. And Lewis will pivot and Pano. And the basket. She spun in and got the shot, the drop, and cuts the lead to four. It's going to come into Burns' hands. So yeah, now Pano's open. Now your first urge is to panic when you get that press going after you. 
Well, Shelton did a good job. Oh, looking baseline, stolen, saved, Girardi. Lost it, picked up by Pano, and she'll kick it back out, and that's gonna be Byrne. Got it! Three-pointer for Byrne! At a huge point in the ball game, will push lead to seven at 35-28. Lewis, got down to the free throw line and just ran out of space. She's gonna drive up and was a block. I don't think so. And it's going to go off from Lewis out of bounds, and what Pontley will lose possession, and Wes Rutland now. Trying to get the momentum back their way now. Girardi up ahead, Hart with the catch, he's going to go right to the basket. And then, ah, uh, what do he call? I think he's going to send Hart to the line to shoot a couple. Got on the arm, that foul will be called on Chambers. The only reason I had to wait was because he went to his head, like you're going to call an offensive foul, but he was just scratching his head. And Hart will rattle it around and not down. And boy, line drive both shots. Only right there, still down seven, and a tip, and stolen away by Pano. And Girardi is going to be falling the backcourt. And boy, Wes Rowland can start sinking some of these free throws. They can put the game away from the line. And Tony Girardi is going to step up there with two chances as that's throw over the 10 team foul limit. And Girardi coils, fires, and no. Tony with a long look up and short. She's going to get the ball tipped to her and gives it to Pano and Pano got it. And the lead at nine now. And time winding down and Mason out of the game with fouls, five fouls. Then they're going to bring it on the elbow. We're going to drive, running one hander, no good. Rebound down to Pulteney, up, hit the side of the backboard, and it's going to be gold basketball. We're going to bring Vaughn, number 35, in the game right now for the Blue Devils. She'll come back in the contest. Ginger Vaughn, number 35. So having a burn, she went over the inline, and that's a violation. And Pulteney, again, they're getting these little chances to stay in the ball game. They just got to capitalize on it now. Bond with the grab, and that's a three ball. No. That was taken by Chambers. And all the way up, and Hart will just about seal the deal with that one. Lead at 11 now. Yeah, I tell you, it changed quickly. Remember how the momentum Pulley had? And then what's wrong? After that blood on the court, he took that time. Girardi's going to get the layup. She got the layup. I got it on tape, but she doesn't believe it. She can watch how she did it. Not only picking on her, she misses a ton of layups. And it bothers her terrible. That time she just went for it and didn't. And Girardi will go after the ball and be out of bounds. And they're going to bring Fox back in the ball game for Lewis for Pulteney with a minute 11 to go and a lead at 13 now, 41. 28. It was tight all the way until midway through the fourth quarter. Again, that's like they had the momentum Pulteney did, and then they found blood on the court, and they stopped the game to clean it up like they're supposed to. And Wes Trotton, before they came out away from that break in the action, and Burke going to get the foul and got hammered. Yeah, that's a pretty obvious one, a blocking call. That's all Amanda Hart with just one minute and one second to go in the fourth quarter. And I was starting to worry about overtime, but. And Shield, get them both. And Burke with the ball. Last thing you want to do if you want to strut is foul. Oh, and Burke just dribbled the ball out of bounds. Yeah, made an unforced error. And we're just a smidgen below a minute. 
And Girardi's got across the timeline. There she goes. And for Fox, picked her up, and Girardi will yeah, have the ball slapped out of her hand. She'll let it go out of bounds. That'll stop the clock for 49 seconds to go. Boy Hart looking and couldn't find it. Burke with the steal. She couldn't find it by open. Burke looking for somebody on the trail and she's going to get it back to her teammate who's going to drive up and foul. Count the basket. Chambers with the basket and the foul shot coming up. And that cuts it to the 13 point lead and still 35 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. And she'll get the three-point play. Byrne turned around. There's a defender right in her face. Hart gets the ball to Pano. To Byrne. Pulls up just shy of contact. Rolled on the rim. No good. Tipped around Bond. Ginger Bond comes down with the ball. She'll throw over the top. 20 seconds left on the night. Chambers killed the dribble. Needs some help to bring it back to Bond. She'll make the grab at the logo turn and... Now, and somebody from the bench, I think it was varsity coach for West Rock, just hollered, no foul, no foul. Six seconds, five seconds, that's going to be tipped, comes down to Hart, she will get fouled. Miss Fox came charging into her and stopped the clock with two seconds. And Hart going back to the line, and West Rock's going to come out here with the win. So we were tied at the half at 15. Pulteney had... Momentum in the third quarter. West Rutland had momentum in the third quarter. As it stayed even, they went back and forth. But it was late in the fourth quarter after the midway point that West Rutland built up the big lead and took control of the basketball game. And she's got that one. 44-31 with just two seconds to go. And that's going to be the buzzer, and so congratulations to Westside. A good effort by Pulteney, but it's going to be a 44-31 West Rutland win in JV basketball.